good afternoon. Today we're going to be talking about faith. And I'm going to start by reading from John chapter 20, verse which is 19 to 31. So this occurs um, according to John, right soon after Jesus' resurrection and after Mary Magdalene had left Jesus and encountered Jesus' empty tomb and then went to tell the disciples that she had seen the Lord. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here, look at my hands, put your hand into my side, no more disbelief, believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's son, and that believing you will have life in his name. So as this passage explains, the joy and confidence that um, came with Jesus' resurrection, it didn't arrive suddenly um, with sunrise and Easter morning, as we might sometimes imagine. It was more of, it happened more slowly. It was a gradual dawning and a gradual awareness. Now, Mary told the disciples of her experience in the garden. They were still very confused and disillusioned when she first told them of this. They didn't know what to think. Um, and then later when they gathered together, behind locked doors because they were afraid of their religious authorities. Somehow, even through those locked doors, Jesus came to them and stood in their midst. And we don't know what it, exactly what it was they saw or heard, but we can hardly even really explain it. But we're told, but we are told that being Jesus filled the disciples with joy. Um, so here we read of Jesus giving to the disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit and empowering them to do the work that lies ahead. Now, Thomas wasn't with the disciples on that first evening, right? So when they told him their experiences, he's very skeptical and doubting, and understandably so, because how could have Jesus appeared to them? But he made his feelings, John makes his feelings pretty clear. He said, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars, my hand in his side, I won't believe. So he was saying he couldn't take someone else's word for it. He said, I can't take someone else's word for it. I must experience it for myself, right? But then Thomas did have that experience, right? So when he appears to them, all the disciples and Thomas, a week later when Thomas is with them, Jesus offers his hands for Thomas to touch and Thomas realizes that, yes, this is Jesus. And Jesus' response to Thomas is that, do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? So he's talking about faith, right? Having faith that um, in Jesus, even without seeing him. And this assures us that faith is no less of a possibility. So I'm going to read you another story now about faith and prayer. It's called the Sword of Wood. And this is a Jewish tale from Afghanistan. 
Once on a summer night in the country Afghanistan, the ruler Shah Abbas changed out of his fancy robes and left his palace dressed as a peasant to enjoy the evening air and to wander through the streets unnoticed. He walked and walked until he reached the poorest section at the edge of town. He soon heard joyful singing coming from a dimly lit cottage. As he peered into the window, he saw a man sitting at a table. He was eating and singing and giving thanks to God. The Shah was astonished to see such a poor man in such good spirits, and so he asked if he might come in as a guest. After accepting food and drink, the Shah asked the man how he earned his living. I am a poor Jew, he said. I wander the streets in fixed shoes, and in this way, I earn enough money to buy all the food I need for one day. But what will happen to you when you are too old to work, asked the Shah. Oh, I don't have to worry about that, the man said happily. God blesses me every day, and I know that somehow there will always be enough. The Shah returned to his palace and took off his peasant's disguise. He was determined to test the faith of this man. So the next day, he proclaimed, no one is allowed to fix shoes for pay. When the Jew went to work, he was astonished to learn of this new law. What's he going to do if he can't fix shoes to earn money? So here's what he did. He lifted his eyes to heaven. And he prayed, God, the Shah has made it against the law for me to fix shoes, but I know you will help me to find a new job. He looked around and saw some people carrying water, and he decided that he too would become a water carrier. The Jew carried water to and from the town well and sold it to people for the rest of the day. And in that way, he earned just enough money to buy food for one day. The Shah again disguised himself and returned to the man's house. He was very surprised to find the man again singing joyfully and eating. How, how are you? He asked upon entering. He heard of the law and had to see how you had survived the day. God did not abandon me today, the Jew answered happily. The Shah closed one door, but God opened another to take its place. I am now a water carrier. The Shah took his leave again. He issued another proclamation. No one was to carry water for pay. Again, the Jew wondered how he could earn money if it was against the law to carry water now. But again, he prayed. And this time, he saw that men were going into the forest to cut trees to sell firewood. So he decided to cut trees and sell firewood also. And that's just what he did. And in that way, he earned just enough money to buy food for one day. Again, the Shah came in disguise and learned of the man's continued faith and good fortune. The next day, he issued a command that his soldiers stop all the woodcutters from coming in the forest and bring them to the palace to work. He dressed them all as guards and gave them swords. He told them that they would not be paid until the end of the month. What do you think will happen with the Jew if he's not paid until the end of the month? He was only getting each day enough earning enough money for one day of food, so he didn't have anything to buy. And indeed, the Jew was very prepared, for he had no money for dinner that evening. And it would certainly be difficult to wait a whole month for his pay. But he trusted God, so he prayed and he prayed for an answer to his problem. How would he be able to buy food for tomorrow if he wouldn't be paid for a full month? On the way home from the palace, while examining his sword and sheath, the Jew had a clever idea. He would make a sword out of wood at the same size as the Shah's metal sword that would look just like it. Then he could sell the Shah's sword for money, and then he'd have food. So he made a wooden sword and sold the real one, and he had just enough money for food for a month. The Shah, in his peasant disguise again, was much surprised to find the Jew singing and eating that night again. When he heard the Jew's story about the sword, he asked him, what will you do if the Shah finds out what you have done? Oh, I don't worry about such things, the Jew replied. Every day my life is filled with blessings from God. I know that somehow everything will come out all right. The next day, the Shah ordered all the guards to report to the center of the city where there was to be an, an execution of a man who had stolen from the royal palace. All the guards came, including the ones who used to be woodcutters and including the Jew. All the townspeople came to see. Now, the Shah ordered his officer to call the Jew to come forth to cut off this prisoner's head. 
Do not ask this of me, the Jew cried. I have never even killed a fly. The officer said it was the order of the Shah and he must obey or risk his own life. The Jew asked for a few minutes to pray to God. Then he stood up in front of all the townspeople and said out loud, God, you know that I have never killed anyone my whole life. Please God, if this man is guilty, let my sword be so sharp as to kill him in a single blow. But if he is not guilty, let my sword turn to wood as a sign of his innocence. So what do you think can happen? What happened? Figure it out, huh? With all eyes on him, the Jew reached for his sword. He pulled it out of his cheek and held, held it high. The crowd gasped and clapped and cheered wildly when they saw it was a wooden sword, for they thought that a miracle had taken place. Now the Shah was delighted when he saw the wisdom of the Jew. He called him near. He told him that he had been uh, the visitor those four preceding nights, dressed as a peasant. And now, he said, I hope that you will come and stay with me in my palace and be my advisor, for I see that you are a man of wisdom and unwavering faith, and I have much to learn from you. So the Jew went to live in the palace with the Shah. And if you go by there in the evenings, you can still hear them singing. So it's through his faith in God and through his prayer that the Jew was able to find answers to each of the dilemmas that were created by the Shah. The Shah keeps throwing all this stuff at him, keeps making it harder and harder for him to find work, to put food on his table for his family. But, but with his faith in God and his prayers, he's able to do so. And what's more, ultimately, he was able to teach the Shah the value of a faithful life. When the Shah finally, at the end of the story, um, realizes what the Jew had done, um, he, he appreciated the wisdom of it and started having a little bit more understanding. But when we face moral dilemmas, the path that tends to lead to justice and goodness is not always clear to us. So in these times, it can be really helpful to lean on your own faith and to really listen for the wisdom of the universe, the wisdom of what's inside you, really listen to your own gut and listen to God. Have you ever had some time have to make a difficult decision in which there is no clear answer? So you go back and forth weighing the pros and cons. Sometimes it might be both options are really good, so it makes it hard to choose, or sometimes maybe both options are really bad, so it's hard to choose, but you know you have to do one of them, right? But I bet in those situations, deep down inside of you, you know what the right thing to do is. Even though it might not be the thing you want to do, you know what's right. And prayer can help us to reach into ourselves and to reach out to God to find that answer that was there all along. So we just need to have faith that the answer is in fact there, even if we can't see it. So just like we know that while we can't see the buds on the trees yet, I'm looking out and I don't, thought I saw some the other day, but we haven't seen any yet, but we know that spring is coming. It's already started to arrive. We've seen some of the, the crocus starting to sprout. And so we know that the trees will soon be colored and leaves again, even though we can't see them yet. So just like we have faith that spring will in fact come again, we can have faith in ourselves and in God. So that's all for today. I hope you get out and enjoy this increasingly spring-like times. And be kind to yourself, be kind to others, stay safe, and I'll see you next week.